Okay, so a little while ago, precisely about three to two months, I made a video on a little game called SCP Secret Laboratory. It's a game that I'm very passionate about, and it's a game that I love and see a, a very good future for, well, for the future. And I talked about the gun overall haul update, which is coming out somewhere later this year. And I made a concept, uh, some ideas I pushed out there. And, well, today, uh, three months later, after the announcement of the gun overhaul, we have actually gotten details. Now, Patreon supporters would have gotten these details earlier, but they released these details for everyone to see. And these details are fucking exciting. I actually am very excited to talk about these. Um, so, I'm going to split this video into chapters, just so that we can, you know navigate to the questions you want to be answered and all that i'll also leave a link to the description of the patreon like page for this uh, like all this information but let's get into it okay so the first thing on the patreon post is a <clears throat> category called new weapons which is you know the big fish okay the, the stuff everyone wants to know Currently, in SCP Secret Laboratory, we have six weapons, two pistols, two SMGs, and two full-size guns in the rework. We'd like to introduce some new weapons and remove slash modify the old ones. We're going to have nine uh, firearms in total. All of these weapons, with only one small exception, will have new models, sounds, animations, and mechanics. So... Here's the list of guns that are either going to be removed, changed, or added. So, the Project 90 will be removed. Cadets will have a different gun. So, rest in peace the P90. Even though the P90 is a classic, this is rest in peace. MP7 will be completely renovated and will have a different name due to legal reasons. It remains in the guard's hands. Okay, so we look to MP7. Com 15 is going to be based off on a different pistol model, the SR9C to be precise. It is pur it, its purpose remains the same, leaving the gun relatively harmless and gives away to bully unarmed enemies in LCZ. Okay. USP. It will be nerfed to a proper fi sidearm with fast draw time and better stats than COM-15. Its name will be changed to COM-18 due to legal reasons. Mechanics, animations, and sounds get reno re renovated, but the model and textures will remain mostly unchanged. Okay, let's go. Um, the USP, I loved the USP, it's pretty good, but they're changing it to the COM-18. No new design. I I'm happy for this. I'm happy to see how this is going to go. The MTF E11 SR will be based on a different AR style rifle. This is depressing. I, I kind of thought maybe they could build off the one they already had, but I, uh, you know, I'm open to a new style AR, maybe more of American weapon M4, uh, something like that. I guess the Cross Vec, inspired by the Chris Vector was the replacement for the project 90 i actually really i i love the uh chris vector the vector is like one of my favorite guns ever so you know i i'm ha i'm happy to have this replace the p90 and the most exciting one for me in this if you remember from my other video i made a ak-12 concept is the ak new weapon for the chaos insurgency we still haven't chosen the model, but it will most likely be based on the Barrel WZ-96 or AK-12. I am so happy that I get to hit this. Now, I, I'm not going to say that I indefinitely caused this. I'm not going to fucking do that because I probably didn't. They're probably just going to choose a more modern rifle. And who knows, it might not actually be based on the AK-12, which is, you know, completely fair. But I'd still love to see, uh, like, I, I still love that the AK-12 is going to be added. Because, you know, who knows, they might have checked their community posts. I don't know, I did po I did actually post this in the SCPSL Discord where 
you know, admins that work on the game do. Uh, I'm not going to say, of course, okay, I, I think I should stop ranting, uh, because I probably didn't cause this to happen. Anyways, now, I actually saw a YouTube comment about this, um, talking about a possibility of this, and I thought, okay, probably not going to happen, but who knows, maybe it will, and, well, yeah, it did, uh, the shotgun, the shotgun has been announced that they are gonna make a shotgun, which is actually pretty interesting, I thought they wouldn't, mainly because it's a more close-range weapon, but, yeah, they announced, you know, the shotgun, so, Shotgun, another weapon for the new CI subclass. A model hasn't been chosen yet, as we would like to test the mechanics and see which model would fit the game best. So, this pretty exciting. Uh, a new actual weapon type. So, you know. The next weapon, the .44 Revolver. This is another, it's a pistol, but another new weapon type. A new handgun inspired by the SAW Model 500. This serve... This will serve as the firearm for the CI shotgunners. It will be very powerful, but with a limited ammo capacity. This is going to be good. Fair enough. The shotgunners definitely deserve a sidearm, considering shotgun is a shotgun. Logicia is going to be based on a different machine gun. Most likely HKMG5. It will receive a huge buff to its stats. At least they're keeping the Logicia as well. So, next uh, subcategory is the Chaos Insurgency subclasses. In this update, we'd like to introduce new subclasses for the Chaos Insurgency. Unlike the Nine Tailed Fox, we aren't going to have one commander, a fixed number of subcommanders, and an unidentified number of soldiers. We're still planning to have three subclasses, but they will all be the same rank. And the number of people spawning as a certain class will be determined by percentage, not a fixed number. <laughs> if that sounds confusing, don't worry. Just keep reading. The Chaos Insurgency can get the following step ups. So, oh, setup, sorry. Uh, setup 1. AK, Combat Armor, Painkillers, Access Device. Setup 2. Shotgun, Revolver, Combat Armor, Medkit, Access Device. S setup 3. Logicia, Heavy Armor, Medkit access device. Upon respawn, people are given setups based on the values on this table. I'll show the table on screen now. I won't explain it, but let's just keep going. Um, body armor. This is one big change that I'm really excited for. All classes would have exactly 100 HP, and body armor will reduce the damage received from bullets and explosions. It won't save the players from SCPs, falling, or any other source of damage. Armor always takes one slot in the inventory, even if it, it consists of multiple elements, for the example, vest plus helmet, are considered to be one item. Since many tactical vests are equipped with special pockets for magazines, wearing armor in-game would increase the limit of ammunition and grenades. That means all humans without body armor will have the same limit of grenades, ammo, um, no matter what class they play. When armor is dropped, all the ammunition slash grenades exceeding the limit are dropped as well. Wearing armor can reduce the movement speed and or increase stamina usage, but this is effect shouldn't be too intense, at least for military classes. Players won't be punished too harshly for wearing armor, as the slot as the slot it takes up in the inventory is enough to discourage some players from using it. <laughs> armor can be dropped on the ground by right-clicking its icon in the inventory. Armor will also drop automatically when someone dies or gets disarmed. The dropped armor can be picked up by any other player, giving them the same benefits as those who wore it previously. If this feature happens to affect the gameplay negatively, we will increase the stamina usage or reduce the movement speed for the civilian classes only. This will simulate the fact that they aren't used to wearing armor. Changing these two values allows us to control how likely civilian class players are to use the armor. Unlike many other games, armor won't deteriorate. 
and its efficiency will not be affected by any <laughs> damage it has already absorbed. At this point, we aren't able to tell if the body armor will be displayed on player models, as the current player models may not facilitate, facilitate the task. We're going to have three armor items. The values below are merely to visualize differences. Please do not treat them as anything final. So, guard armor used by facility guards. The efficiency of the armor for body damage is 40% and 45% for headshots. Combat armor used by nearly all MTF and CI classes. The efficiency of the armor for body damage is 65% and 80% for headshots. Heavy armor used by MTF commanders and CI machine gunners. The efficiency of the armor for both body and headshots is 80%. Please note that these percentages are inflated because they are dependent on the bullet penetration mechanic. Even the least powerful weapons can penetrate about 50% of the body armor, meaning its damage reduction drops by half. The actual damage reduction can be calculated using this formula. Here's the formula on screen. For example, bullet penetration for SMGs and pistols in between 40 to 60 percent, while rifle and LMG bullets penetrate up to 80 to 95 percent just for visual purposes. Let's consider a scenario where all weapons deal exactly 20 damage and they only differ in penetration capabilities. If you're attacking an unarmed enemy, the body damage is always 20. The result of our formula gives 0% damage reduction, 0%, uh, okay, yep. Uh, however, if the enemy is wearing heavy armor, which has 80% effectiveness, an SMG or a pistol would only deal 12 HP, while rifles would deal 16.8 HP. To kill someone, you'd need 9 shots from the SMG, as opposed to only 6 shots from the rifle. Remember that... The, they deal the same base damage, but the only difference is their armor penetration capa capability. Here are some calculations if you still don't know how it works. Calculating headshot damage is exactly the same. Yeah, yada yada. That, that that's the point. It's it's a it's not how most people would think it works. New mechanics. We're changing nearly all weapon mechanics. This section is pretty much a list describing all the elements we're going to change. Whew, let's go. So, more attachments. Hell yes, I've been wanting this for so long. I want new attachments. We're introducing stocks, grips, and different magazine types. They will be able to change the weapon draw time, accuracy, and even stamina usage in extreme situations. Foundation guns can be adjusted at workstations or while spectating. Chaos Insurgency guns can only be changed while spectating. We want unmodified weapons to be just as powerful and universal in their own way. Attachments can boost certain stats, but always come with downsides. In other words, attachments let you, let you make your gun more task-specific and adapt to your style of gameplay. But leaving your weapon without any attachments won't be a bad decision either. This is great. I I want to do this with certain like situations. And the one thing that I will get into later is you'll actually be able to change your attachments um, while spectating. So if you know what SCPs are there, you can change all your attachments while spectating <laughs> to be tailored towards defeating that specific SCP. I really like this mechanic. I think more attachments should have been in the game long ago, but... Now we're finally getting them, and I'm very happy to hear that. Inaccuracy. The effect that causes bullets to fly in random directions, which causes the current logistia to be super ineffective at long distances, will now play a more important role. Standing still and aiming down the sights guarantees the best results, while running, jumping, and sprinting makes the gun weapon unpredictable. This also depends on the weight of the weapon. Long, heavy firearms such as logistia or rifles with heavy attachments become very ineffective unless you remain stationary. SMGs and lighter rifle setups are more forgivable, but only at short distances. 
So, you know, it, it, don't think of this as CSGO, which I'll get into the next reason why it's not going to be like CSGO or Valorant's aiming system. Recoil patterns will be introduced. Bullets will still land where you're aiming, but the camera kick will follow a predefined movement path. path. This is something which you can learn to get better at, i.e. Rust slash COD style, not Counter-Strike style. So there you go. Hit scan. Hit scan will remain, which means bullets don't have a simulated physical form. Instead, they travel with light speeds. We're going to experiment with the penetration system of thin surfaces, but nothing has been finalized. And we aren't sure if there's really what we're looking for in our game. Okay, hit scan is still going to be in the game. Ammo counters, while unrealistic, will still be used. There will be no fixed GUI element that tells you how much ammo you have left unless you open your inventory. Okay, glad ammo counters are still going to stay. Weapon manager tablets. We've decided that workstations will no longer require them. We're also planning to move the drop ammo feature as a button in the inventory. This renders the tablets relatively useless. Considering the body armor occupies an inventory slot, tablets would most likely be dropped by an even bigger number of players. If we decided what to do about SCP-079 generators, tablets will be removed. So, rest in peace for the uh, weapon match tablets. Reloading. The process is going to be more complex as it will be as it will respect the fact of having a bullet in the chamber. Each weapon will get a few reload animations for diversity. Fuck yes, I love more weapon uh, stuff. Ammo. Due to new weapons being added to the game, we need to have more than just three different ammo cartridges in the game. Because new weapon types are now a thing, we're forced to add more than just three ammo cartridges to the game. Currently in Secret Lab, we have 9mm for pistols and the P90, 556 for MTF E11, and 7.62 for the Logistia and MP7. We decided to standardize the matter and have the Chaos Insurgency use completely different cartridges than the ones found in the facility. The Foundation weapons will use 5.56 5 uh, for the MTF E11 uh, and 9.19 uh, pistols and SMGs. The Chaos Insurgency will use 7.62 for the AK and Logistia. The .44 mag revolver, uh, well, for the revolver, sorry, and the 12 gauge for the shotgun. In addition, we are adding different bullet types, which differ in penetration and damage. That's right, we're getting entirely new bullet types to this fucking game. I was not expecting this. Full Metal Jacket, or FMJ. Considered the universal and is default for most weapons. It has average penetration and damage and will be and will serve well against all enemies. Armor piercing. AP uh, has higher penetration than FMG. The base damage is the same, but it's usually balanced by having fewer bullets in one magazine. And then we have jacket of the hollow point, JHP. Bullets which in real life expand their diameter upon impact. This causes more damage to internal organs, but has less penetration. In the game, they will perform much more better against armed, armed enemies, but slightly worse if the enemies wear body armor. To simplify things, we decided that bullet type will be considered as a weapon attachment, depending on the select magazine. If, for example, you have two different MTF rifles, one using AP and the other using FJ, once you reload, they will both be filled with from a collective 5.56 reserve ammo, meaning that bullets become a specific type the moment they are loaded into the gun. There you go. So I'm gonna. There's a whole nother catalog of weapon types. I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, there's also a QA. and a I think this video has gone on for fuck way too fucking long. So, I hope you guys enjoy. I will link this in the description if you want to read the final parts. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.